And breaking right now at noon, Omaha's police chief releases new details about the second officer involved shooting within a month. Now, right now at police headquarters, we're hearing why an officer shot and killed 22 year old Stephen Phipps near 31st Avenue and Taylor. I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. You ain't got shooting a few times. They just did this shit a fucking game, y'all. We just got out of a meeting about this shit. Just got out of a fucking meeting, and the police just shot another motherfucker today. The defibrillator. Look at this. Oh my God. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Live in the newsroom. Oh my God. Waverly, Omaha oh Police, God. they showed the moment Officer Noah Zendejas fired eight times, killing Phipps, the fatal round entering his shoulder. Zendejas and Officer Alex Atkinson pulled over Phipps on Saturday near 31st and Taylor Streets for expired license plates. Phipps got out the car briefly pausing and then running from officers, ignoring commands to stop this video from a nearby transit camera. Both Zendejas and Atkinson began chasing him. As Phipps jumped over a chain link fence, Zendejas shot him eight times. Say was eight shots really necessary at this point? Was this officer life truly in danger? One shot could have been cool. He could have shot him in the arm. He could have shot him in the leg. This sounds like assassination. This video clip is months before he ended up killing this man. So this video shows how this officer Noah harasses people. This woman called the cops originally for a crime that was committed against her, but then Noah took it upon himself to harass her and her family for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And, weeks. Mm, and I know y'all. What's the problem now? It's just traffic stop. It smells like we get tourist searching. Another traffic stop out of nowhere. What do you mean another one? The first one, I tried to stop, he fled. No, so that ain't what happened. <laughs> what happened? We went to court about it. <laughs> that wasn't what happened. <laughs> what happened? Y'all hit y'all lights and turned off. Definitely did. I oh, I went to court for that. Oh, yeah. Trust me, I know what happened. Y'all can't chase cars. Y'all chase everybody 24 7. What were y'all talking about? I see y'all chasing people 24 8 around here. With lights on? With lights on. I lights on. Y'all got y'all lights on or y'all don't got y'all lights on. Either way, and y'all got other covers every time. At this point, I'm starting to feel like it's harassment. Second time I met you. The first time was third. Third time. So third. Third, 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 third time we done met. First time I was helping you out. Third time we done met. Yeah. First time someone slurred you out, I was helping you And y'all still didn't get it. Yeah, bro. We got we hell. Hell. No, y'all didn't even get oh, you. We, got the gun. <gasps> we did get the gun, actually. How y'all got the gun and anybody told me y'all got my gun? Well, it's being used in investigation right now. What? Since when? Since when? Cause I swear to God, no one called you? nobody ever called me about my gun. Otherwise, I would have been came for my gun. I know. Even if it's an investigation, I would have got called because I own that gun. It's registered. Ain't nobody gonna forget to call you about your gun. Y'all didn't forget to contact me when y'all told me y'all went to go get it, but y'all y'all didn't get the gun. Y'all told me y'all didn't get the gun. When y'all went to go find my gun, y'all told me y'all didn't have it. The first time, no, we didn't get it. So when the hell did y'all get it? Probably like what, two months ago? That was about when the hell it happened. Uh, it, was like, it was a few weeks after we found yeah. it, but yeah, right now it's evidence. I don't, I'm surprised they haven't called you yet. Ain't nobody called me about that damn gun. I would have been happy to know that somebody found my gun. Come on, hit the All right. Uh, you guys are good. Pretty purple morning. All right, just make sure you look What's up, everyone? Welcome to the channel Work Plus Gains, and I'm giving y'all a news update on a situation that happened in Omaha, Nebraska. There was a police officer named Noah who shot someone point blank range eight times in the chest. He said he was a threat, but the guy was running away because he pulled him over for a traffic violation, which is technically a policy. It's not a law. When they made the Constitution, that wasn't put in the Constitution. But anyway, so they pulled him over. He got out. He ran. He jumped over a fence. And when he jumped over a fence, I guess a gun fell out of his pants. And then the officer was shooting at him point blank range eight times to the chest, which I think that's uncalled for unnecessary. If you thought he was a threat, shoot him in the shoulder, shoot to wound, not shoot to kill. I'm a soldier and we were taught shoot to kill, but also some people taught us shoot to wound because some people, instructors will give you bad advice to where if you shot someone, they'll leave you out to dry. If you shot an innocent person, because other people in other countries, they stand together and united. When you take out someone, it was unjustified. So I need our country to unite together to hold everyone accountable. Even the people who are carrying guns and shouldn't be carrying guns even people who are breaking certain laws they need to be held accountable but they should not be taken out in assassination type type attempt 
eight shots is overkill. One shot is enough. But information is coming out that they've been making police reports against this man for harassing people, stalking people. He has followed certain people over and over and over and they were actually children to a mom had to record the incident and say hey this is the third time i'm running into you and you haven't found nothing on none of my kids or none of none of us i actually called you the first time because i had an issue with someone stealing my car and taking like a weapon out of my car and after that you've been hounding me like i am uh, a suspect and i think that's wrong so there's multiple incidents where he's been messing with different families throughout the city he's been working there for three years and none of the people in the police department have disciplined this guy so i just want people to get out, get involved, get active. Because recently also, there was a town hall meeting. Once again, they didn't have multiple town hall meetings in Omaha this or uh, within the past 30 days. And the second um, hometown or uh, town meeting, a lot of people got involved. Was like, hey, we need to hold the cops and the civilians and the people in this community accountable. No matter who it is, everyone needs to be held accountable. And during this moment, the police officer snuck into this meeting and anybody who said anything negative or they didn't feel um, went to their plan, they harassed them after an event and they ended up arresting two people and then made a bogus story about they were threatened to shoot cops, which doesn't make any sense that you would go to a big open place and make those type of threats. But also there were community leaders in there who spoke out and said that that is false. And one thing I would like to say with my own personal experience, I was attacked by the cops and I actually helped the cops out when I was around like 19 years old. There was some, or 18. There was people fighting at a September fest and I broke it up. There was two females trying to fight two female cops and I knew one of them didn't know the other girl. Well, I actually knew two of them. But there was a third girl I didn't know. One of the girls I knew was in the cop car and they were threatening to shoot the other girl for whatever happened. I was like, oh, hey, officers, I'll, let me calm them down. Get them away from the scenes. The female cops were like, thank you. We appreciate you. And as I'm walking away, some cop has nothing to do with the situation, came over and harassed me and led me to go into jail. I never fought him, never did nothing. He just walked up on me, pushed me in the street with a horse. Another guy came up, started choking me from behind and they were just beating the crap out of me. And then I finally fought, fought back after one minute and he still tried to paint me as a victim. People who saw them do me wrong end up changing their police story. You saw a bunch of scribbles on their police stories and was scratching stuff out, changing their stories. And when I went to court, they ended up just saying, hey, we'll drop all the charges. We just want you to apologize. If I was such a criminal, cause they painted pictures like I had a gun on me, had a bomb on me. I was punching horses. I was punching police officers, just attacking my community. And if I was such a threat, they would never just told me we'll drop all the charges and just want you to apologize. So don't be thinking that cops are always doing everything by the book. There's a brother code. Sometimes people won't tr betray their brother because they don't want to be harassed just like they harass the people they harass you inside the police department they did the same thing to people in the military so i'm just trying to speak up do my part i know they're trying to silence people in my city they've de they deleted certain video footage that omaha put up i don't like it there is some racism in my city but there are also some people that love people of all colors of all races but i'm just trying to do my part to you know get it out there because it's bothering me i had a family member that was at this meeting who's very involved in this community. They didn't say nothing crazy, they didn't get arrested, but I don't want to take the chance of them going to jail or having the cops harass them. So please share this, put this out to, to the world. I just want people to get eyes on Omaha. And I think it is smart that people in the community who are powerful, successful, y'all have a platform, y'all need to speak up, say something. Like Warren Buffett, Terrence Crawford, anybody who's make money off the city, anybody who has a city, or the community supporting them, helping them make more money, you need to speak up. You shouldn't just be always on vacation taking trips. Speak up for your people before it turns into a war zone. There's a lot of people getting mad and pissed right now. So please, Omaha police, you need to do better. My community, you need to do better. I'm trying to hold everyone accountable, but we gotta stop letting people who are in power slide when we put them in power. Please, get this video out there. And I'ma just, yeah, that's it. What's up world, it's Leo. And first, let me say thank you to everyone who's sending condolences to the Lewis family for the loss of our loved one who we lost at Los Diablos over the weekend. The last time I talked to my cousin was down at Los Diablos at three o'clock in the morning when I was out doing public safety work, just walking through. And me and him had a great conversation about life, about our goals and ambitions and what we could do to help better our community and our family. That's what we talked about at three o'clock in the morning, standing outside at Los Diablos. When I'm regularly down there, I walk through and I don't see a lot of people who claim to do outreach work or ministry. And I'm not saying that people aren't doing that work. I'm saying that there's a very small amount of people who are actually doing the work and we're exhausted. 
So we appreciate the encouragement, the condolences, the prayers, and the people who stand with us when we do this work. And it just so happens that I wasn't there that night. But I'd like to say this, because I recently facilitated the town hall meeting just hours after finding out that my cousin was killed. And even with that going on, I knew that our community still needed a place where it can vent, where it can breathe a little bit and find comfort in one another to share narratives and understand that we're not alone when we go through things in our community, especially when it comes to issues of police violence or harassment. If you know what happened with Stephen Phipps, then you know he was harassed and he had interactions with officers in Dejas and Atkinson's a year prior to this last incident. And it's a shame that when we had this town hall meeting, AKA rally at a church, in order to bring peace back to our city, that the police not only surveilled that area, but targeted two of Phipps family members, arrested them, claiming that they had felony warrants, which they may have, I don't know. But what I do know is that they sat on that meeting and observed individuals and then targeted them, pulled them over, and then put out on their Facebook page a narrative that these two individuals stated that they were going to shoot and hurt police officers, and that is not accurate at all. One person in the community stood up and said that we need to take accountability and hold bad actors in our community accountable. And if we don't do it as men in our community, then nobody will. We have to, as men, stand up in our community and hold bad actors accountable, police or non-police. There was nothing said about threatening the lives of police officers whatsoever. However, it was taken that way by whoever decided to interpret that and put that in an article and call it an anti-police rally. You can see how evil a person has to be to be insensitive to the Phipps family, but then go further and call them police haters and then go further to villainize not only the church, villainize the event and villainize the entire community. How evil do you have to be to do that? Pay attention to the targeting and the profiling that not only happened to Phipps, but what just happened during this rally that took place at this church. You see what type of people are running that page. I'm not saying that all police are like this, but somebody got to get together because instead of saying sorry, instead of apologizing for the hurt and pain being caused in our community, what an institution is doing is trying to protect its egos and rallying behind the idea that it should go to war with an entire community. That's a shame. So people like me who love my community, who spend time handing out water, volunteering, serving in the greatest capacity in which I can, I have to make videos like this to let you know I'm still alive and to know that a system is stacking up the odds against people like me and other people who want to see peace in our community just so that they can save their egos and continue to do the work that they claim that they do, but in reality, it's just hurting some people. And instead of taking accountability for that, they want to continue to do the bad work and justify it. And that's not right. If you're in the community and you out here packing a gun and you got enemies and you killing innocent people like my cousin, you also need to be held accountable too. And that's the reason why I do what I do, is to give people opportunity to make that shift, to do something better. And sometimes they just need to see good people. And so if you're a person that got a good heart and want to do good work, get with me. Or get with one of these organizations, get with an institution, or do what's in your heart that you know is right to do and stop procrastinating on it. Because this is real hard for me. Real hard for me. Because I'm one of the few people that really, really put it on the line. And I don't see a lot of people to my left and my right when I'm out there. There are some. It's just a few. But please, pray for me. Pray for my family. Pray for this community. And to the Omaha Police Officers Association that claims that it loves this city so much, then show it through your actions. I'm Leo, I love myself, I love my community, and I show mine through my actions. Peace, y'all.